Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm heading out to the main garden bed to do a quick update, or sort of quick, maybe not quick at all. And first of all, I'm just gonna show you just a real brief, kind of run the camera, pan it across here so you can sort of see things are growing. But I'm not gonna be talking about everything. I've decided to try to keep these videos a little bit shorter and also to be able to focus on more things at a time. I'm going to just pick sections of my gardens and uh, and just focus on just them and show you what's going on. So today, this little section right here of my main garden bed is what I'm going to be talking about. Now, just for those of you who are new, we are only on a third of an acre in a neighborhood. So I call this my main garden only because it is the biggest garden section that's taking up most of our backyard. And then of course the chickens over there, we got mostly potatoes and stuff over there, but I'll be talking about that separately in another video. And then I've got gardens out front and along the side. And then of course on the deck, as you saw, as I was coming out. So I want to talk about, since this is the, the, um, most productive part of the garden this time of year of the backyard garden i decided i would focus on it first and then you'll see updates of it down the road as i go over what's in these other sections over here in future videos okay so starting right here i've got some sunflowers growing they actually go all the way down and these are all from seed I started these myself in the greenhouse from sunflowers I grew from a few years ago from seed that I got from Baker Creek that was actually a free seed packet. So those are the lemon queen sunflowers. They seem to do the best here. These bigger plants here are my marshmallows. They're about half the size that they will be once, they're, once they reach their full height. And this is the tallest one at uh, well, from where I'm standing, it looks at least four and a half feet, but it's probably only three and a half feet. And, uh, and I've already started harvesting some of the leaves, drying some, eating some. They're great added to uh, fresh to salads. And uh, I have a video just on marshmallows that you can find um, and the benefits of them. And, and I think I might go over how I use them. And I'll go ahead and link to that in the art card at the corner. Okay, so I was starting from this end. So let me get back down here. Okay, obviously, dandelion. Uh, there's a several dandelions I leave in here intentionally because I harvest the flowers and the greens, and I'll be harvesting the roots uh, probably in late summer, early fall this year. Instead of, uh, instead of harvesting the roots uh, in early spring, I decided to try to see if I can wait until fall when they've got most of their benefits. That's where you're gonna have most of the benefits in the roots is uh, harvesting them in the fall. Uh, anyway, along here and all these bricks are, uh, well, not all of them, but most of them, I've got some green onions growing. These are not green onion. I started from seed. <clears throat> what these are basically recycled green onions. My son, he likes to cook with green onions quite a bit. And when he uses what he wants, he gives me the rest and I plant them. This is what I did last year and I got green onion lasting me all actually clear up to winter it's through part way through winter I was able to harvest uh, green onions off them and I'm going to be making a chicken fried rice today from a chicken that I cooked in our solar oven right over there yesterday and because we had a beautiful sunny day so I cooked a whole chicken and I'll be using some of the leftovers to make fried chicken uh, fried chicken fried rice and I'll be adding some green onions to it so I wanted to shoot this today before I harvested a whole bunch because I'm going to take quite a bit off these and you can see you can just keep harvesting off them and they'll just keep giving you more and more green onions and they'll keep getting bigger and bigger like this one's getting quite a few little shoots coming off of it so continuing on this right here is uh, my yarrow this was actually my main yarrow plant and the funny thing is, it seems to be the only one I have coming back this year. So I'm going to make sure that I take some, make some starts, like you can see some smaller plants along the peripheral here, and I'm going to go ahead and make some more plants and uh, put them out front. And then something that was very exciting to me, right there, I discovered this yesterday. That is Anis hyssop, and it gets a beautiful cone-shaped purple flower and it has it tastes like 
licorice. It's just, it's wonderful. And the last two years, I thought it had died because I, yeah, I hadn't seen it come back at all. And so I was thinking, well, darn, I lost my, I lost my uh, hyssop. And so uh, yesterday I found this growing. I'm like, well, that looks like an awful lot like hyssop, <laughs> like my Anna's hyssop. So I, I took a taste of one of the little tiny leaves and sure enough, that's what it is. And I, all I can think is that the last few years, because uh, the anise hyssop is one of the slugs favorites. It is their very favorite. They'll just keep mowing it right down. And so I'm thinking maybe it's not that it wasn't trying to come back in the previous two years, but that the slugs just kept eating it down. But now that we have our slug population down to a minimum here in the backyard, thanks to my lovely chickens over there, letting them run loose in here all winter long, uh, all through fall, winter and early spring, I think that I think they did a really good job of getting the slug pop population done. So now I've got that coming up. But wait, there's more because I just discovered this little guy a few minutes ago. He was actually growing in this brick right here and I moved it out there because I don't want it growing in the brick. And so that is another one. And how it ended up way over here, I don't know, especially since these bricks are new. It's just odd but not unless it was seed just some old dormant seed that had fallen from the one that was over there and that soil got moved into here it's really hard to say but then these right here this is uh this grows wild this is not chamomile i know it looks like it this is pineapple weed they are related and it, the pineapple weed does have its own medicinal benefits especially for women's reproductive health and so I will let a few of these grow. It has a nice flavor, uh, just tastes a little bit like pineapple. So the name uh, of the pineapple weed comes partially from the flavor, but also because the flowers, they don't get petals like, like a chamomile or a daisy does. They just kind of get this cone shape. They look a lot like a pineapple is what they look like. And they're quite tasty. So I will let some of them grow, but these have come up wild. They're, they've actually come up all over the garden. I'm pulling some of them just to keep it thinned down a bit. But um, uh, yeah, I definitely want to keep some because I do like pineapple weed. <laughs> and then my, my woolly lambs here that is about a fraction of the size it was last year. And I actually had, up until last year, I had four growing across here and they were all huge. And last year I, I dug up the one here one there and one there to give me more garden space because this one at the time was huge. It's much smaller now because Patrick had to dig all this out to put these bricks in and that took a good part of it out. But I have two more of these out front so it was no big deal and these will, this will just continue to grow and get big all over again. So you can see if you've noticed I have a couple little tomatoes here and there planted. Um, I keep trying to grow some in, out here in the main garden just to see if I can get them to do well. Because in our area, tomatoes tend to do best in a greenhouse. But I'm determined to keep trying to see if I can get them to, to grow and give me a decent production out in the main garden. You know, without having to be under the cover of the greenhouse. Now, you may have also seen, oh, by the way, that right there is an echinacea I started from my own seed. So hopefully I can replace the echinacea that was once growing here. But anyway, all this kale and radicchio is self-seeded. But what's weird is it had to have self-seeded at least a two, from two years ago. Because I hardly had any grow last year. And now it's just been coming up everywhere, everywhere in the garden. Some of it I've had to pull because it's just too thick. But I'm definitely going to let it stay here. This is a great spot for it. I love radicchio. I love the Russian red kale couple of my favorite things and I was bummed last year I didn't get very much it's usually I just never worry about planting it because it grows like a weed but uh, anyway I'm really happy this year I have plenty and it's just interesting that I have to I'm having to actually thin it out <laughs> compared to last year so anyway there's my main echinacea plant or the one main one that's left and right here is my spearmint and one thing that's kind of nice about the spearmint, though it's not my favorite mint for flavor, the one thing I like about it is it doesn't spread as quickly or take over as badly as many of the other mints. Like the mojito mint is my favorite for flavor, and it's also the one that takes over the most. But that's fine because it's my favorite. 
right over there is one of my mojito mints. I have another one out front, a big one. And you can see, oh, right there, that's the woolly lambs ear spreading out this way. <laughs> so, oh, and then there's that lavender I showed in my last garden update video back here. It was all spread out. What I did was I simply pulled it together, piled some good fresh soil around there and some grass clippings. Because what I find is a lot of your perennial herbs are gonna prefer a, a little bit more acidic to a sweeter soil. If nothing else, a lot of them don't like heavily, uh, just very rich soils. And lavender is, is one of them. And so is sage. It doesn't like a super rich soil. Now some do, but uh, the and some don't care. Like the mints, they'll grow in just about anything. But the lavender, you know, I, that's why I'm putting the grass. It's going to give it more richness, but it's it's uh, it's mostly to help break up, you know, because we had a lot of horse manure and stuff in here before. So I'm trying to get it a little more acidic in here to get it less sweet. And I think it's going to be happier because the last few years we piled the horse manure around it. And I think that was the problem is it just didn't like the horse manure because my sage did the same thing. Um, but it's doing fine now. We didn't put any horse manure around the sage. Oh, okay, so back here, I got a couple of my, my runner beans, which are one of my favorites because they're beautiful. They're, they get huge and um, they grow really well here. And the slugs don't demolish these ones as badly as they do some of my other beans. <laughs> and then, okay, right there, that is my... Um, one of the valerians that I started from seed this year actually got valerian to germinate for me this year. I was so excited. And this is the best looking one so far that I've transplanted. I have several more I've transplanted around the garden. Um, so far, this this one um, is doing the best. So this must be the best spot for it. Uh, it could be because of this particular soil isn't isn't as rich as some of the others. And so maybe it's like... It's like some of the other ones, so it doesn't like a super rich soil. Um, I like to use grass clippings also because it will help hold the moisture into the soil and keep it from drying out. All right, well, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. Watch for future garden updates coming soon. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless. Hey, chicky birds. Should I let the chicky birds out?